So this is it. This is the uh, 27 by 21, 12 foot wall, uh, verse two building. So it's quite a bit later. And finally the actual structure is done being put up. So as for the color, I did the, uh, I believe it's charcoal gray for all the sides um, and then white trim and roof just an attempt to keep some heat out uh you know if it was a black roof or a dark color roof the sun would really be beating on it um and it would absorb some of that heat so the white should reflect a little bit and keep it a little bit cooler in there all right so this is pretty much going to be just um now that the building is done going through uh kind of what it was like building it ordering it getting it and all that stuff and just pretty much if you're thinking about getting one of these uh stuff to think about um, especially if you're gonna be building by yourself. So yeah, put some, I put this together, um, pros, cons a little bit, and uh, just things I ran into. Let me know if this helps. If it does, great. If it doesn't, then someone probably explained it better, but there you go. Put this together, just me and one of my buddies, and actually his father, came to help to set up the base rail and all that stuff the first day. But we did all this on like Saturdays, uh, a couple weekends, but took me about from start of the framing to everything being totally done, like sheet metal, trim, um, the framing for the garage door, about <clears throat> one month. So, I mean, I guess if, if we worked on it every day, it probably could have been done in a week with just two guys. So. But you can really see this thing is super built. You know, there's trusses, uh, wicked, wicked heavy duty. So we'll talk about a couple things here. The first impressions of the building, once you're in it, is uh, you can really see, you know, just how sturdy it is. All the framing and stuff is pretty strong. Um, the, it's kind of all planned out and it's gonna depend if you do engineering, dr engineer drawings or not. I did for mine. That adds a little bit of time to the order, but it was worth it just because you put in your zip code and there's a few other things, you know, you work through uh, with the salesperson and it kind of makes the building fit your area. Then also if you have to do inspections and permits and all that stuff too, that could affect, you know, if you went with uh, the cheaper one or you went with a model that was built a little bit, you know, less reinforced, it might not be up to code. so. That's kind of some footwork you gotta do for your area to find out what you need. One more thing to keep in mind is keep an idea of what you're gonna contract out. For example, uh, I had the concrete contracted out and then also the door installation. All I had to do for that was put up the bracing that he wanted so that he can mount his door. Um, but the lead time, I kind of wish I ordered sooner. And then the man door, you can get that uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, wherever and uh, just make sure you get the correct size frame for your building. On the subject of doors, uh, like I said, the man door is a 36 by 80, and then my actual garage door is 16 wide by 10 foot tall. Uh, and you're gonna really decide this by uh, just what are you gonna use the shop for? Um, you know, I'm pretty much gonna be working on trucks, quads, stuff like that. So if you're gonna only be working on cars, you really don't need a door that big. And on the subject of what you're gonna be using it for, we can kind of go into some of the concrete details. What I did for mine is I did an Alaskan slab or also known as a monolithic slab. So it's a two foot haunch, you know, down and over. And then I've got actually a six inch floor um, and that should support pretty much anything I'm gonna do. It's really honestly overkill, but it's gonna be a solid floor for a long time. Also, when you're planning for concrete, um, that's gonna be the time where if you're thinking you might do radiant, you know, you can put the tubing in and that way it's there, you know, and you come up with a plan how to, how to heat it after, um, or you could just do a unit heater or a mini split, you know, there's a lot of options there. Now with the concrete, 
you're gonna wanna try to get it as square as possible or have the contractor make it as square as possible, obviously. Uh, if someone else is doing it, you can't control that much. In my situation, that's kind of what I experienced. A lot of people will do the slab with kind of the, um, the overhang to it. You know, ideally the sheet metal should be overhanging this. And a lot of times you'll see the concrete like this with the lip. I didn't do that because doing all the work myself, I wanted there to be some buffer room where if I had to make any adjustments. Another thing I did, since I don't have the overhang I want, is I put this foam right here, this stuff, um, between the concrete and the base rail. Uh, kind of to keep bugs out and also hopefully to help keep some water out. I think I'll probably seal the sheet metal to the slab as well. And we'll, you know, we'll find out as time goes if I did a good job sealing it. You know, if we have water creeping in, dripping down the walls and then sitting on the concrete coming in. So one thing I wish I had done differently is I wish I made an apron coming out. You know, maybe if it just extended, you know, three feet with a pitch to it for entering the garage. Um, I've got to do something now. I don't know if I'll form it up with concrete to get in just so that isn't getting chipped up. Because if I were to do gravel there, you know, you bring something in on tracks or whatever, it's going to chip that up. I thought about putting this steel edge along that and then putting gravel to it, but we'll see. So if anyone has any ideas on that, let me know. Um, just kind of what you guys have done for the entrance point. Getting into some of the difficulties of this project, I've never done one of these before, um, but however, I do have construction experience. I'm a plumber by trade and uh, I've done, you know, other various things too. I am familiar with, uh, with building stuff, but doing a straight up building was a challenge. One thing I found hard to do once I got all of the uh, framing done was trying to land my screws on all of my, my metal. So I actually set up this magnet with a string on it. Um, I would put one screw in pretty much and then run the magnet across on the, you know, from the outside and then I would know where to land my screws. So. That's a rudimentary way to do it. You know, I also had a laser, but when it was super bright out, you couldn't see it. So that was a little bit tough. Um, and you can sort of feel it too, because this stuff, you know, it does flex, you know, it's, it's pretty thin, but sometimes when you miss, it does suck. You, you miss it. And what I did is I left the screw in and then put another one actually where it was supposed to be, then went back and siliconed it. Surprisingly, uh, once this was complete, I only had two small roof leaks and I was able to fix those with silicone. Some things that are really important is get some good clamps like that. That was a lifesaver for me. You know, that's pretty much another person right there when you're trying to put stuff together. And then also I went to Harbor Freight and I got these baker stands. Um, you know, you could rent a scissor lift or whatever, but that worked best for me. I think all together is like 400 bucks. Um, I bought two sections of it. And even when I'm done, I could use it for shelves or something like that. But just wheeling around, doing the roof, doing all the trusses, doing the hat channel, getting up and down, that was a lifesaver. I can't imagine doing it all with just ladders. You know, I had three different size ladders, a 12 foot, eight foot, and a six foot. Uh, then the extension for getting up on the roof. Um, that was pretty nice. Also, I wish the instructions that were given were a little bit more specific. Even with the engineer drawing specific to your building, it does give you the layout, but it doesn't label any parts or pieces. So I, w I found myself identifying a part, just matching it to the picture, um, which was a little bit tough, um, especially for the trim. That's where it got real difficult, but it ended up working out. This is all the J trim on the outside for the door. Uh, you, you have to figure out how to do that because you're gonna be cutting and folding quite a bit to match it up correctly. And then also one thing that's super important is hold on to that book they give you and just do it in the steps that they say it in, you know, cause it's easy to get carried away. You start putting stuff up and uh, you're, you get momentum and you just start framing and framing and then you realize, oh shoot, you know, maybe we put that brace on early or something like that. I had a lot of difficulty. Um, aligning all the A-frames up, and we were going back and forth with straps, trying to straighten it out and stuff. But ultimately what I did is once I found out they were all pretty much the same height and everything was inserted all the way, I just started putting the hat channel up from the bottom and that really squared everything up. Um, that was important to do. 
Also, you may not know it, but you will have to cut all the back walls. These panels come straight, and depending on the size you're building, you're either gonna be starting with one in the middle, or you know two in the middle, then cutting it, but they give you a dimension for that. Uh, I just used the angle grinder to do all of it, and that worked out pretty well, but you're gonna cut this here, you know, the peaks, and then also the doors. You can see that's a full panel there, and I had to cut this whole section out. Same thing with the man door as well. So an angle grinder works really well. There's a few tactics, you know, if you were to do it all with snips, um, it might mangle it quite a bit. I use snips for the trim a lot, but even that I, I use an angle grinder mostly. Ultimately I am, you know, pretty happy with how it came out. You know, you can tell if you look down, down the line of screws, a little bit wavy just cause <laughs> I'd never done it before, but uh, I would probably do it again. Uh, it being, you know, this big, the 21 by 27, it was a challenge with just two guys. If I had to go any bigger, it would definitely take longer, but I learned a lot doing it and uh, kind of, you know, you figure it out as you go. So you get faster and you know, you'll do one side of something. And then the second side you fly through it because you've already done it once. So it's a bit daunting when you first get it, but you just start putting it together and it all makes sense. So if anyone has any questions about my kit or just first tube in general, uh, let me know. I'll do the best I can to answer that stuff. But we're working on it when we have time. So that's just how it goes. But uh, get out there, work on something, and don't be afraid to take on a project you've never done before. Because uh, usually it turns out pretty sick. This all went from being an idea to suddenly I'm standing the thing, you know, just a little while later. So that's it for today. We'll see ya.